<laughs> all right, tonight is all about reviewing Australian content and basically talking about those. For this week's episode, we have reviewed ACDC, Catalano, Calibrium, Cherry Grind, Dangerous Curves, Eat the Damn Orange, and Fallen Ends. There'll be more next week. We're going to kick off with ACDC, obviously, and the album of choice is Back in Black. Yeah. Chosen by? Chosen by Dean Whedon, a part of the wider audience in general. Ten tracks for 43 minutes. This is the seventh studio album from this iconic band. Their sixth international release, released by Albert Records and Atlantic Records in July 1980. This was produced by Mutt Lang and recorded at Compass Point Studios in Nassau, the Bahamas. This was the first album with Brian Johnson after the passing of Bon Scott. This would go on to be this, become the second highest selling album of all time, going 22 times platinum. Stayed in the Billboard charts for 131 weeks despite never going number one. Yeah. Is the highest selling hard rock record in history, <laughs> as well as the highest selling album ever by an Australian musical act. Mm. The accolades don't stop there, but I will. Uh, four <laughs> singles will be released <laughs> You Shoot Me All Night Long, Hell's Bells, Back in Black, and Rock and Roll Like Noise Pollution. As I said, this is an audience choice. So. A what? Audience choice. <laughs> <laughs> Dave. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's easy to joke that ACDC have made the same album over and over again, but they have their style and their sound and it serves them well. So what is it about Back in Black that, stands, that makes this classic album stand apart from anything else? Well, they've always been masters of the double entendre, but there are some total classics on this one, Let Me Cut Your Cake With My Knife being one of them, mm. and the song Giving the Dog a Bone. Um, it's great songwriting overall. Uh, it's not just the hit songs either, it's a lot of the album tracks, mm. or what would be considered an album track, but they're just as good as the ones that everyone knows. Um, there's no dull moments on this album. Every kid who has wanted to start a rock band has probably learned the songs on this album. Mm -hmm. um, Angus is a bit more mature in his playing on this one. I mean, if you compare it to um, Let It Be Rock, he's just shredding away. And his solos are a bit more subtle, which gives it a lot more power to the songs, and they fit the songs a bit better. Um, <clears throat> I go back and forth between this one and Highway to Hell, and I suppose a lot of people do. The mm -hmm. debate could rage mm -hmm. on forever. But fuck it, they're both as good. And um, yeah, stand out to everything, 10 out of 10. Wow. Everyone should know this album, uh, and if you don't own it, then why are you watching this show? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> this is simply one of the greatest albums ever made, I reckon. Um, I think after Bond's death, you could only imagine what those guys were going through, you know, and to come back the way they did was just unbelievable. They recruited the most perfect singer for them, I reckon. Every song is a hit. Production's fantastic. Angus's guitar sounds like a demon. I love that guitar sound. Brian Johnson's wails are just perfect. His vocals are perfect. The rhythm section and Malcolm just sit in the, in the pocket. They just play great. And Angus and Brian just tear it up. Mm. Amazing album, amazing band. 10 out of 10. Oh. Well, yeah, it's such an iconic album, like everyone said. Um, I honestly didn't know where to start with this review, so as I sat there writing this and trying to think of a good starting point, the haunting intro of Hell's Bells possessed me, yeah, yeah. and I was headbanging at my computer desk for the next 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's infectious as fuck, and like we've all said so far, one of the greatest hard rock albums ever made. There's so much to say and so much that doesn't even need to be said. Uh, surely everyone's heard this album well over a dozen times, and if you haven't heard this album, that means you probably died before it was released or were cry cryogenically frozen and only just woke up and haven't had a chance to listen to it <laughs> Either way, I feel sorry. Too many movies for you. Yes, indeed. Either way, I feel sorry for you if you haven't heard this album. Um, I could go on about how iconic it is and what makes it iconic. I could compare Bon Scott to Brian Johnson all day long. Mm. I could break down each song, but I won't do any of that tonight because we all know this album is great and doesn't need my approval at all. <laughs> but 10 out of 10, standouts, Hell's Bells, Shoot to Thrill, Let Me Put My Love Into You, You Shoot Me All Night Long, Rock and Roll Ain't Noise Pollution, Have a Drink on Me, and the title track, of course. It would have been quicker to release the ones you didn't, or talk about the ones you didn't pick. I know, right? <laughs> First off, this has got one of the most iconic openings to an album ever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, considering how much top end is involved in the sound with the guitar and the vocals of Brian, this album is surprisingly warm, so mm. very well done. Production is great, suits perfectly, nice space, but more than enough balls and nothing hurts, which it could have easily been that piercing sort of sound, but it doesn't get there. Mm. Considering everything they had to do to deal with, this record, the energy on it is simply amazing. Uh, lyrics are great too, diverse, and they suit each song perfectly. You could not get through life, I think, and not know some of these songs. That's how great the legacy of this record yeah. is. Yeah. And it's funny that for me, I <coughs> actually can't imagine Bond singing these songs. No. I can't. I can't and that's... Really. Brian owned it. And that's a testament to the man himself. Axel does them okay. 
Yeah. yeah we're, we're not talking about a fucking axle, okay? Axle, baby. Oh, you in. had to bring that into it. I did. Shut the fuck up. Um, it's an Australian show, not a fucking Ranger American show. All right. Um, I'm going to get in so much trouble. Um, fuck it. The performances and the writing are fantastic. I love the track diversity as well. So many people like to write this band off and say it all sounds the same, but this album alone disproves that, in mm. my opinion. Mm. It does sound a little bit dated, but it's the good kind of dated. It takes you back, doesn't make you cringe. It stands up today. Mm. I know everyone loves Angus, but Malcolm smoked it on this mm. album. He oh, yeah. fucking nailed mm -hmm. it. The tight rhythm section. Such a well-crafted album, it takes you and holds you. I, I love it and I really appreciate this one and doing the review process on it. Iconic is the only word to describe it uh, in so many ways. If you like hard rock and have never listened to this, you need to unfuck that right now. <laughs> I love the subtle shifts in tones and sounds, the great subtle performances and production to suit peaks, troughs and dynamics. Have a drink on me. Mm. Classic album for sure. <laughs> this has everything, including bad puns from us. Uh, nine and a half out of ten. Hell's bells. Shoot the thrill. Back in black. Rock and roll. Ain't noise pollution. My standouts. Your feedback is welcome. So have at it, and we'll give you a taste. <laughs> <laughs>